Can you talk the talk? In this exercise, we'll pretend we're having a technical interview. I'll ask you some questions, and then you're going to explain to me how a sending host generates an Ethernet frame. Well, let's jump in. So let's say we're in a room together and I'm interviewing you, and it's a technical interview, and I've drawn this on the board, and I'm filling in some IP and MAC addresses. Then the question becomes this, hey, I want you to describe Ethernet framing. Describe an Ethernet frame sent by host A when it's ready to send a 100-byte IP packet to host B. All right? And you can start out generically, talk about the frame built by host A, and just talk about the fields in that frame and give me the big ideas first. And then I want you to fill in the values. Tell me the values and the, and the reason you picked those values for the different fields in the frame. And um, be specific when you can. You may not be able to for all fields, but be specific. In fact, let me warn you here. If you've been following my video playlist for CCNA along in order, you're pretty early in that. You probably won't be able to fill in all the fields and their values yet, and that's okay. You can watch this video and hear about them, but by the time you're done with your CCNA studies, you ought to be able to. So if you're further along in your CCNA studies, I'd expect you to have a pretty good idea of what's in that Ethernet frame in this scenario. All right, so for all these interview reviews, here's what you do. You actually answer. You don't just watch the video. So I want you to hit pause now and speak to yourself or someone else or type it up for yourself or type it up and even post it on a forum somewhere and practice answering that question or that series of questions. Strive for accuracy, terminology, and clarity when you do it. All right, you can hit pause now and do it. I'll give you a few seconds to do that so you can do the exercise. So here I go with the first bit of explanation. So spoiler alert, I'm about to reveal the answers. All right, let's do it. So here's the Ethernet frame generically. There's data in there, and there'll be a little bit of padding. We need 46 bytes in the combined data plus pad, so the pad is there to make sure it's at least 46 bytes long as needed. Then there's a type field, which identifies the type of header that's inside the data. Like if it's an IPv4 packet, the type field would have a value that signifies that. Then we've got the destination and source address. And by the way, these field lengths are two bytes for the type and six each for destination and source. Then all this part that's got the curly bracket above it is thrown into some mass to build a value, a four byte value for the frame check sequence. And then there's a preamble plus single byte start frame delimiter for a combined eight bytes to begin the frame as a way to signal at the physical layer, hey, here comes the frame. All right, so those are the main components of a generic view of an ethernet frame. When it happens to use a type field, there are a couple of other formats for it, but the one with the type field, as you see here, is the one that I took the time to go over in the instructional video, so it's the one I'm using here in the interview video as well. Now, here's a page you can hit pause and review some of those things if you just want it for reference, but I'm not gonna take time to talk through all the table here. Then what am I listening for in that interview? Well, there are some things that I think are more important for real life and for your CCNA, and here we go. I would assign mentally the biggest points in the interview for knowing about the source and destination address, the protocol type, and FCS, I thought about putting it in the less important column, but FCS, it's on the left right now. And then less points, I don't care so much if you understand the preamble and start frame delimiter and the padding. Um, useful, but less useful, if you will. And then the field sizes, other than the destination and source address, knowing that the addresses are six bytes are uh, pretty important, but the rest of it is maybe a little less important in the overall scheme of things. That's just how subjectively I would have been thinking about it as an interviewer. Next, let's talk about the specific values in the header. So there's a generic header. What values go in there as the frame is generated by host A? Well, the destination MAC address, it turns out it's the router's R1 MAC address on the interface in the same subnet as host A. And that's the part that I wondered if you might not know how to answer that based on where you are in your studies. Now, I'd, ex I'd expect a fully certified CCNA to figure that out. But if you're not there yet, don't worry about it. I'll explain more about that in just a moment. The source address, though, of course, is host A's MAC address. Host A is generating the frame. That's the source. The type, it happens to be a value of hex 0800. That's a bit of trivia, but you know, if it's useful to know, but not terribly useful. 
The data itself, there's no padding in here because the instruction said it's a 100-byte packet, so it's not too small. We didn't need any padding in this case. You'd never be able to predict the value of the FCS. You'd have to know a bunch of fancy math, so it's the FCS calculated on math on that middle part. And then the preamble and start frame delimiter turns out it's alternating ones and zeros, except the last two bits are one, one. Again, I think that's more trivial other than just to say, yeah, you could know that and it might be useful at some point, but it's less important than the other things. So about the importance factor on all these, just giving you my interview scorecard, knowing the source and destination address, big points, protocol type, yeah, I'd say that's somewhat important, and then frame check sequence, how that works, but less points for the rest of it. So for those of you that were scratching your head about that whole MAC address thing, in the earlier videos, I showed you examples with the computers on the same LAN and said, what's the frame look like? Why here, A, B, C, and D are on the same LAN, and if I give them some IP and MAC addresses, they might be those. So if A were to send an IP packet to B in this scenario, then the destination MAC address would be B's MAC address. That's because the host's logic in this case is this. It says, I want to send a packet to 10.1.1.2, B's IP address. It's in the same subnet as me. So I'm going to send this packet in an Ethernet frame directly to B, to B's MAC address. All right, so there's B's MAC address as the destination, and the source would be A's MAC address, of course. So in that scenario, it's directly to the destination because you're in the same subnet, whereas in our interview scenario, the destination is in a different subnet. So the thing that you might not have learned yet if you're learning things in sequence and you're early in your CCNA study is that host A's IP logic says to send a packet to a different subnet over here, send the packet to your default router first. To accomplish that, when you build this Ethernet frame, you want to send it to destination MAC address of the router that's acting as the default router, and that's R1's left-hand interface in this case, and that's how we get the 0200000111 MAC address that we see in this case. All right, so if you were a fully certified CCNA, I would say I would expect you for sure to be able to come up with that destination MAC address that we just talked about and even talk through the routing choices that I described just then as to why that's the case. But if you're still learning and you're just getting into it and you're following things in sequence, you just haven't gotten to that yet. But this whole topic area is one of the preeminent topics in networking. We're going to see it and see it again and see it again and see it again. You'll have it down without having to go out of your way right now to say, oh, I've got to go research that. Don't worry about it. You'll get to it. Hope you enjoyed this interview review. If you want to click on the left, you'll get the next new topic in sequence, which is about half and full duplex. Or if you're ready for the next chapter, click on the right and go ahead and jump on to talk about WANs and routing.